Hello, I'm James Cook, and this is the James Cook Podcast. Hey, personality, it is definitely what is needed in the world of radio. Uh, people love to identify with the voice on the radio. It helps whenever you have a lovely, quirky mouthpiece like the person I am speaking with today. I'm talking with Corliss from College Station. Corliss, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's good. weird to be called a mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> We're already kicking it off on the right now. Right? <laughs> Just banter. This is what happens. <laughs> well, uh, what town did you grow up in? Did you, you grew up in Kansas, right? I did. And it's a little middle of nowhere town that nobody would ever know the name of. It's called Hoisington. Uh, so I always tell people I'm from Great Bend, Kansas. Not that you'd actually know where that was either. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the next biggest thing to kind of put a landmark. Yeah. <laughs> I was just a little country bumpkin from the middle of nowhere. Say the town again. Hoisington. Hoisington. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, you're trying too hard. It's, I think it's what it is. Uh, the radio station that you first started with that got you going, because you started when you were 18 years old. 17. So, just 17. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was still a senior in high school. Okay. And that, was there a, a place that opened up, or how, how did you get in the radio biz? So I was finishing up high school obviously senior year uh it was either get into radio or enlist in the navy and i i Options. didn't really yeah like i started kind of going back on my lifelong dream of joining the navy and i'm like i don't know if i want to do that so um i told my dad that i wanted to work in radio and i started talking to a professor at kansas state university to ask how do you get into radio? And really they said, take whatever small job you can and work your way up. So my dad just so happened to have the general manager of my local radio station uh, it, at his office one day and said, hey, do you happen to have any work available for my daughter? She'll change the trash. I mean, it doesn't matter. And they said, yeah, we have a position open for a board op. So at 17, I started you know, operating boards for help information, please, uh, which was a doctor show and a, a Trinity Lutheran church program. So I worked every Saturday and Sunday. Can you tell me something about my medical condition today? Oh, Do gosh. I, look like I have jaundice. I don't, I don't know if I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> so when it, when, I mean, when, really, you got to remember, I was a kid that had been out on the weekends. And so I had to just, I turned the program on. And I turned it off. That's all I did. Yeah. When did you first get your, you know, first DJ job and what kind of music format was it? So uh, same station. We had a cluster of stations. But while I was their main board op there, they did an update to their system and was able to allow voice tracking. So I got to start recording each and every Sunday from one to six, a program on 100.7 Eagle Country. And so as a country format was always the dream. Okay. And yeah, so I got to start doing Sundays, I think when I was like 19. You were doing country music. Was that the style that you listened to growing up or? Yeah, well, really, I, I grew up listening to everything, uh, but con country concerts were always the equalizer there. Like, I grew up loving Elvis and the Beatles. Um, I also love metal. I love All That Remains and Avenged Sevenfold and Metallica. Yeah. Um, but radio-wise, I had met a radio DJ at a country music festival, and she got me meet and greets for cross canadian ragweed and that was it that was the summer before my senior year and i was like that's what i'm gonna do so yes country was always the goal not just because it's what i listened to it's it was kind of a way of life for us yeah. so is the cross canadian ragweed was that the first introduction to the texas red dirt scene no, because I didn't know that that existed. You know, I thought they did the song with Leanne Womack, Sick and oh, Tired. Yes, they is. played on CMT all the time. I didn't learn about Red Dirt or Texas Country until I moved to Manhattan, Kansas, and saw 
uh, Casey Donahue. And shortly after that is when I started DJing at a club, which was a Texas-based club. It was a rock and rodeo. They had one in Manhattan, Kansas. They had Stoney LaRue come by and play. And okay. so that's where it grew. It was not actually radio. It was from me DJing in bars and clubs. So what brought you to Oklahoma? Stoney LaRue. Um, he just I had, picked you in the truck. Right? He said, you're coming with me. Oklahoma breakdown, baby. We're doing this. And he probably doesn't even remember this. I was just having a chat with him. And I'm like, I don't, what's my next step? Because I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. I feel like I should move on and up in the world and he was aware of my love of the genre and he said i really think it's probably time for you to go to texas if not texas at least get to oklahoma and lo and behold a week after speaking with him about that a position in stillwater oklahoma uh opened up and i applied i accepted and once I saw Stoney LaRue again, he was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, <laughs> you told me to come here. I did what, I did what you said. <laughs> so, so you went to the thick of it. Stillwater is what is just known for, um, you know, Jason Bolin, that scene, The Great Divide, these big names that were coming out from that area. And you go to the thick of it in Oklahoma. Now, Around that time, I believe Chance Anderson is doing a lot of work in Oklahoma. Did oh, you yeah. You got oh, yeah. I got, a, I got a chance to see Chance twice. <laughs> nice. Um, this was also Reed Southall's start. If you're a Reed Southall yeah. uh, fan, oh, I, I was there right when they recorded their first record. They brought in Serenade to me at the station and we promoted a show at the tumbleweed which ended and i got to go announce for it was ben mckenzie and reed southall band and getting to watch them grow and then moving to texas afterwards and everybody just loves them and i was like man i used to just hang out with these guys at the bar <laughs> who else did you i mean like a stillwater's still kind of living off that vibe from from the giants that we know today uh, was there anybody else that you remember from the Stillwater area? Or? Oh, so we've talked about the Gypsy Cafe event before, and that's a big fundraiser every year at some downtown bars, including Eskimo Joe's. Is it's a bunch of those Red Dirt artists coming together and performing together to benefit the Red Dirt Relief Fund. And I, I got to see... Stoney LaRue and Brennan Jenkins sing Feet Don't Touch the Ground Ooh. together just a few months before we lost Brandon. Oh. I, I kid you not. There's, Beautiful moment. I mean, it's, it's burned in my mind. Yeah. Uh, you can't be more thankful for yeah. something like that. Mike Costi always played around there as well. If you ever get a chance to see a Mike Costi uh, show, he's a one-man band. And most okay. of his songs are pretty much just comedy. Um, don't wear makeup because your eyeliner will run all the way down your face. It's Had so that funny. All the time. Right? <laughs> but he, he wrote Oklahoma Breakdown. So, oh, he did? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, this is the best thing about these things. I learned so much. Uh, <laughs> So you finally made a move to Texas. Now, see, that is where I met you. I had met you in Oklahoma. Super was, sneaky, yes. <laughs> and then I, you were like, yeah, don't you remember me? We like totally talked for the first time in Stillwater. And I was like, I totally forgot about, I'd remembered the conversation. I just didn't remember where it was. I so, met you the last week. I was at Stillwater. Oh, that's a, okay. Then that was the transition. I was I, I was moving. And then also check this out. You're going to Texas. You're in the yes. of it. You're in a college town. Crazy. I've been in college towns. I was in oh, Manhattan, yeah. Kansas, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and then College Station. Man. Yeah. So this is just kind of this is you. You know how to do this. So whenever you got there, um, how was the transition? Was it, were you still checking out the same bands? Were there new bands that you checked out in College Station? So by that time, uh, everybody I had pretty much worked with in Stillwater because of the Tumbleweed Dance Hall. So, um, you know, Cody Johnson, I had already announced for several times. Kyle Park, got to know him really well during my time in 
in Oklahoma. Um, so no, I, and while I was working at the, I was on a top 40 station there and a country station and my former PD would teach me how he does music. So that's where I learned about Texas charts mm. and working with the music. So no, I was already pretty familiar, but when I went to KORA, that was when we actually had artists coming in constantly and there were more venues. So that was the difference in the music was actually getting to see people and meet people. So you would come to call a station initially to work for KORA and then, yeah. you, then you started working for the Maverick. Did you take that over? Or did you get that going? How did that work out? I did. I took a, a long break, which was my first break ever. Uh, cause usually in radio, you know, you move from one job to another within a week of yeah. getting the job. It's very quick. Uh, so I took a long break and this local station Maverick had already been established, but they got a hold of me asking me if I'd want to come in and do something a little bit different. And so I came in and did something a lot a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> Was it originally a Texas Red Dirt format or? No, 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 no. It was pretty much just a strictly like top 40 country radio station, um, which is great. But we already had another one of those kind of stations in town. Okay. So there's a lot of country radio stations here. A lot of great country radio stations, to be honest with you. And so what I did was I just flipped the format to all Texas, Red Dirt, Americana, independent artists. Let's talk a little bit about those artists from the area, those Aggieland artists that you kind of get to utilize for Maverick, who are, who are some of the people that you really get to connect with. So we were able to just do a category and it's once it at least once an hour you hear a local artist um they could have like william clark green went to high school here oh, lyle wow. love it uh but we've also got all the new artists like morgan ashley or john stork you know john stork lived here a long time so when you listen to Maverick 100.9, you hear at least one of our Aggie Land artists a day. And we do branded intros, like Donis Moros does a intro to his new song, you know, and he says, Hi, I'm I'm Donis Moros and I'm an Aggie Land artist because you know I spent the best four years of my life here, meaning he's an Aggie. The college station vibe. Was there bands that kind of just blew you away in College Station the first time you saw them? And you could just like the, the people that are people. actually from here? Yeah, from around the area. Or or just somebody that you saw happen to see there. I got a great example, Mike Ryan. Oh. I watched Mike Ryan in Kansas at a bar across the street from my house, and I, nobody there knew him. I saw him at a music festival that John Party was headlining. Hmm. Nobody showed up early for Mike Ryan. I did. He played in Stillwater for Homecoming, um, but it was just outside of a frat house. It was free. Nobody was watching him. I was fangirling. And then <laughs> finally, I get to Texas. I go to see Mike Ryan at Hurricane Harry's. Mind you, it's my first time meeting him, and I just blubbered all over him. I'm like, dude, I'm your biggest fan. This is too cool. <laughs> and then to see Hurricane Harry's packed full of people singing his songs, I was like, how do all of you know his songs? <laughs> <laughs> that is a weird thing with College Station is that I notice – that not only do they love the scene, they're very familiar with each and every song. Uh, I remember going there one time and seeing, hearing a Coetzel song for the first time and people singing the song like it was freaking Journey. I mean, yes. they were just like singing it and feeling it. And I was like, what is this? And I remember I just finished a set at another bar and I went to this bar uh, and I hung out with some of the people that were there. And I said, well, who is this? And they were like, oh, it's Coetzel. And I'd already heard of him, but I, didn't, I hadn't heard him. And I remember saying, well, that's crazy that I don't know any all of these songs, guys. but they just know every lyric to every song. And, and I met all of them while in, once again, in Oklahoma. And it was kind of a no big deal. I met 
Co-Wetzel and Reed South Hall. I had just announced a Parker McCollum show before I had left. Yeah. And then you come here and it's sold out shows. You can't breathe. Yeah. And it's sheer happiness. The difference was extraordinary. And uh, once again, that's what I get nerdy about. I love watching that growth yeah. of an artist. It's so cool. You're trying to make sure oh, yeah. you're cool. You know. I just don't anymore. I'm so, <laughs> I just I love it. Love it. Everybody. So I ask Mike Ryan, who his biggest fan is, he's going to be like, it's that crazy blonde from college. <laughs> Stay away. Uh, so was that one of the artists that just kind of blew you away the first time? Is there any out there that you could think of that just like, as soon as you heard them, you knew this, they've got something. This is incredible. Well, Cody Johnson. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I had heard him early on and started going to his shows. Um, I was a really big JB and the Moonshine Band fan. Yeah. And I got to see them once, but by the time I I moved down here, there was really they just no one. a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, but people shock me every day. There's a kid named Cameron Hobbs. Have you ever heard him? Oh, Cameron. Yeah, I know Cameron. Oh, my word. <laughs> he awesome. opens his mouth and I start crying and I don't know why. I can't control myself. So, I mean, yeah, there's there's people that shock me yeah. each and every day. Is there a reason why you think people are attracted to this scene? So say you go to a live show and you get to see how people react to someone, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, when you watch Kyle Park stand until two o'clock in the morning after his show, having a full-blown conversation with each and every person that bought a ticket to see him, it strikes a different chord. And when you ask people, do you know this Kyle Park song? And they say no. And you get to play it for them. And you see their eyes light up. And they're like, wow, I didn't know something like this existed. And that's it. Mm. It's, it's not a matter of disliking one side of the genre. It's just shining a light on there's more. So if yeah. you're ever unhappy with what you're listening to, it's just always good to keep in mind that there is more. You just yeah. got to find it. There's no need to dislike anything. You just got to find what you like. Definitely. Good stuff. I'm not, you're such a positive person, Cordis. I love this. <laughs> so let's get to some nitty gritty. Do you have any backstage stories that you're not supposed to tell me that you're going to go ahead and tell me on the podcast because you're awesome? Mm -hmm. I have so many, <laughs> so many good backstage stories. I have a few favorite Cody Johnson stories uh, just because I'm a huge fan and I see him a lot and I, I am very fortunate to get to work with him a lot. That's Ooh. awesome. Is he, is he living a, there? He does. And because his whole band lives here, but I worked with him a ton in Oklahoma. Well, I was hosting, uh, I think it was the 2017 Calf Rye. Okay. Maybe it was 2016, somewhere around there. Um, Cody Johnson had really gained that national popularity. Um, obviously, Kojo has always been famous in Texas, but um, he headlined Calf Ride that year, and it was 16,000 people. I am just filled with terror from head to toe because I have horrible stage fright. That's a lot of people to be yelling at. <laughs> and one, I always thought it was so weird that he even says hi to me. <laughs> so, you know, we're backstage chatting and there was a moment where, so here's 16,000 people that are there to see him. He stood right on the edge of the stage and looked at all of them and just watched them. And nobody knew he was there or else they would have rushed that side of the stage. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew he was there. And I asked him if I could take a picture because it was just a cool moment. And I did. I, I snapped a little photo of him just being humble and soaking in what was his and what he had worked for. And I, I thought that was such a magical moment. I have that picture framed in my home. And then, you know, it, it, my stage fright came into play as well and he had to give me a pep talk <laughs> cody backstage is one of the coolest human beings ever yeah he is very humble he's very real 
Yeah. And when I when I the last time I hung out with him backstage, Tracy Bird, Tracy Bird opened for him, and he was sitting right there, <laughs> and and he was it was I the look on his face was almost like he was being blown away for the first time. So I went up to him and said, Hey, is this is this the first time that that you're sitting here watching him open? He's like, Nah, I've seen him every night. Like every night he would just go up there and watch Tracy Bird and get a sh Tracy Bird show. And that's how he got in the zone. And all, it was, and also, I don't know if you saw that part, the way they, they, they pumped themselves up right before the show. They, yes. they said, oh, that's such a cool moment that, um, that I actually pumped myself, pumped me up. And I was just going to introduce them. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah. yeah. I feel but, it. but we Come do. On. We also, we give, you know, Cody Johnson so much credit, but what the, the site that people don't see backstage is his entire crew, whether it's his crew, whether it's his band. Talk about just a group of phenomenal musicians and you're in their presence. Yeah. Cody Johnson aside, you're, you're still in the presence of some of the greatest musicians that will have ever lived. And it's such an aura of yeah. talent and a pure love of music that it's the dream it's what we all came here for but and yeah a, that's that would have to be well. my yeah the focus the work you know there's no better adrenaline rush than trying to stay out of an artist's way while they're working yeah i think that it's what makes me scared and i hate it but it's also there's a rush from it because it, yeah. that's their job and they're working and they're working so hard. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows the lead up. Yeah. All the stuff that has to happen in order for them to get to where they are. So let's, um, let's do some questions. I love asking these because uh, I get weird answers every time. Um, best thing about your job. And I don't mean the job that you have right now. I mean, of course, just being a DJ in the scene. The people. And that means all people, whether it's artists, new artists, big artists, um, clients, people that advertise with your station, getting to know your local businesses, getting to know your listeners and what they love. It's just people all the way around make your job worth it. It's weird. You don't depend on yourself at all. You depend on others and meeting them. And it's, it makes me so happy. That's great. You're a people person, so I can see how you'd love to do that. Let's go. Complete opposite of that. What's the worst thing about that job? I, would, I know everybody price says this, but it would have to be the pay. <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> to eat. It is. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get perks. <laughs> like every once in a while, I, I yeah. get to go to a concert. I got a platter of cheese. Um, that's, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> every once in a while, someone will bring you donuts. That's the best, uh. that's the best thing. Because when you have it, and there has been times in my career where I've gone three, four days without eating. If somebody shows up with food, you never know when you're actually <laughs> saving a, an entertainer from starvation. So thank you, all of you who have yeah. fed me over the years. Oof, the the I'm thinking right now uh, locally for me the Winthorpe sausage feed, they br they bring us the sausage the weekend before they have it. Oh yeah, and it, honestly it's just this huge trough <laughs> that just start chowing down on sausage. So yeah, the food is always great. All right, let's do some rapid fire questions. You, I'm gonna ask you some questions. You just answer as quick as possible. Here we go. Northgate or Sixth Street. Northgate, never been to Sixth Street. Oh, now we have plans. Do hey, hey. Documentary or reality TV? Oh, documentary. Okay. Acoustic listening room or honky tonk? Oh, why are you mean? That's a hard one. I knew that was going to get you. Acoustic. 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 Yep. Okay. Tex Mex or barbecue? Barbecue. Okay. Last one. Favorite festival to attend? <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, it'll have to oh, it'll, it'll have to be my my first and always festival which doesn't even have the same name now but it was called Country Stampede in Manhattan, Kansas. Now it's Heartland Stampede in Topeka, Kansas, but my parents have been taking me since I was 5, 6 years old. 
it's where I decided that I was going to work in radio. Um, it's where my boyfriend works every summer he has since he was 14. It's our family and it's our everything. So Country Stampede would have to be my festival. But there's so many. Festivals are life. <laughs> That one hurts everybody because they're like, oh, why'd you bring up festivals? You know, we like, can't what's go to festivals wrong right with you? Uncle you're Rock. so sick. That one has been hurting people lately. I love the <laughs> question, but to look on everybody's face, like, why you got to bring that up, bro? Oh, man. Well, uh, Corliss, we've been speaking with my great friend and radio personality from the College Station area. Corliss, she is on Maverick 100.9 Aggieland's Country Alternative. And she also, there it is right there. Hey. She, she also hosts our weekly show uh, with me, the Cook and Corliss uh, Countdown Textravaganza, which I love saying. Thank you so much for joining us on the James Cook Podcast. Thank you for having me. 